Today, a video on my plein air painting setup for watercolors. I personally think you don't have to take much, and even though I personally really enjoy watching people tell me about their advanced big setups for painting in plein air, I think it's most of the time very overdone um, and way too much materials to take, and also not very beginner friendly because you might not want to buy a push art box for a couple hundred bucks when going outside to paint for the first time because you don't even know whether you like it or not. I'll just go over the materials I tend to use real quick and then I'm gonna tell you what I might add in the future and what I might um, change out in the future as well. First thing, very important, to take a sketchbook. Obviously, um, I'd recommend taking a sketchbook over taking paper, sheets of paper or like a stack of paper or something because sketchbook is very compact and also you can hold it in your hand. And that's the biggest point I'm going to make in this video is you don't need a plain airbox as long as you have a setup that you can put on your lap or take in your hands. And I'm going to show you. I personally use this very small one um, for my plein air painting, generally because it's the only one that really properly holds my uh, watercolors well because it's the right kind of paper. This one is the one I took to my trip to Italy recently. Very handy and very useful. Take yourself a, I don't know, it's also very cheap. I bought it when I was in Poland to, to study at Focal Point and I think it was like 10 bucks which is very cheap and it's been holding up fine. Um, I've been having a little bit of problem with my paper quality here and there, but we're not going to try to make perfect pictures every time we go outside. We just want to learn, study and make color notes for ourselves. So the quality of the paper honestly doesn't really matter too much. The second thing I sometimes take is my bigger sketchbook. Um, it's still not very big, um, even though it's the bigger sketchbook, quote unquote. Something like this, I'm normally painting those, right? It's a little bit bigger sketches, but still it's not like gigantic or anything. It's again about making color notes, understanding the color relationships in the light and the shadows, um, more so than actually making a nice big painting. If you want to really make good paintings, you have to be an amazing, great painter. Like, for example, Andrew Tischler makes very nice videos. I'm gonna link some here somewhere. He makes very nice painting videos where he takes his big Peshat box and his oil paints outside and does a study in a few hours, which looks very nice and very, very, very refined to me in my eyes as a intermediate artist. But that's not really what I want to do when going outside plein air painting. The next important, well, well, not really important, but for the approach I like to take because I feel confident in sketching, but very inconfident in painting, I take, take something to sketch out. Um, I've got two things I normally take. It's a 2H pencil, so it's a very, very hard pencil, so I can sketch in very lightly. It's very useful for using watercolors because you don't want to have to opaquely cover everything, especially in the, in the light shapes. So taking a very light pencil is very nice, so you can't see it under the watercolors that well. And the other thing is something I picked up from James Gurney. Um, he is oftentimes using this uh, watercolor pencil in red. Um, which I've been trying out recently and it's kind of fun, but also it's making everything rather warm, which I'm not sure I'm really liking that much, but it's a very, very fun experience. So if you want to change it up for extremely low price, get yourself some kind of watercolor pencil in red and do your sketches beforehand in that. And now to the actual painting stuff. To be honest, I don't really care about what kind of colors I use. Um, I have this rather small, this old, rugged tin box. I can mix colors on the bot bottom and top lids. I cut down a brush so it fits inside. And then there's a few colors inside, but honestly I tend to only use one green, the yellow, not even the yellow, most of the time I just use the yellow ochre, the red, one or two blues, one is warm and one is cooler, so it's nice to have a little bit of variety in blues, especially for skies and, and stuff like that. And then mixing your shadow colors in the in the trees. I tend to use cooler and warmer blues for different applications, but in general, I don't use many more colors, except for one thing that is, in my opinion, the single most important thing you can take when you go for a plain air painting session, which would be some form of white gouache. Since watercolors aren't able to cover over previous layers at all, taking white gouache just to make the color color be a little bit thicker and a little bit more opaque is, in my opinion, the single most important thing to take. It's going to make everything so much more enjoyable and also mistakes aren't as glooming anymore because you can get something that's lighter 
over something that's darker. It's not going to work as well as it might in gouache or acrylic paints, but it's going to work at least kind of. So always take some white gouache. It's also the spot you can see in my palette with the dried paint. It's where I pull my white gouache normally. You can reactivate it, but normally I just get something fresh so it has no single tint of any color in it. Speaking of painting, everybody's gonna have their favorite brushes. Uh, I personally just take whatever I can find. Normally it's something bigger, uh, like this is my number 12 brush I normally take. But to be honest, um, it's very beaten up and I don't care about it too much. And sometimes if I feel fancy, I take this number four brush, which is a little bit better condition. So it has like something to, to shield it more or less properly. But most of the time I just take this one big brush uh, and I just throw it in my bag because it's beaten up already anyways. And it makes the whole process so much easier. It goes back to the approach of me not wanting to make a perfect painting, I just want to learn. This is all I need for that. So I don't really think you need all the fancy brushes. Because even if you try to start to take care of them and put them in your posh art box or in any kind of different um, kind of casing, you're gonna have to search for a casing again, and then it's gonna be analysis paralysis, which casing is the best one I can take, just take some random ass brush, throw it in your bag, Make sure it's one you don't care about and go outside and try it. Honestly, I've been doing this for about a year now and it's the same brush I used a year ago. If it gets wet, it's fine again. It's not great, it's not gonna get a point or anything, but I don't want to add detail anyway, so take just one big brush and call it a day. The next two things um, I take, it's one of them is a big luxury item for me. I just got it recently and it makes something makes life very much easier. But it's not really necessary. Um, I've been doing the plein air stuff to, to practice for about eight to nine months without one. But getting as like one of those spraying water bottles. Um, this one is from some kind of old shoe coating. I just washed it out and gave it some fresh water, right? So you can spray to wet your palette again. Um, it's very useful, but honestly, you can do it with your brush. You just have to. Get water, clean your brush, get fresh water so you don't muddy up your paints instantly. But this is a big luxury item and probably the first luxury item I would get for myself if I wanted to go outside painting is some kind of spray bottle. And on the topic of the spray bottle, of course, you're gonna need water. Um, I just took like an old jam container, it's watertight. It's the same one I took a year ago, I'm it's the same one I'm gonna take five years from now. Maybe it's a little big. Um, I even got myself one of those clips I'm gonna show you, um, which are useful if you plan on painting on a level surface, for example a posh art box, but the way I paint it's very inconvenient because it's gonna tilt all, all, all around and the water being so close to you, the stuff you're actually painting is very dangerous and I've poured a little bit of water over a few planar paintings before. And honestly, that's probably it and most of the stuff you're probably gonna have lying around. Except for maybe a sketchbook with the right kind of paper or um, the paints themselves. But if you're gonna buy paints, don't buy like a big box. Get as small of a container as you can with dried paints. And I personally would even like half this one if I could. Like it, in my mind, this is way too big because I don't use most of those colors anyways, right? I just mix them and I don't clean the palette like ever either. Like sometimes I wipe down a small area because I want to get a very clean mix. But dealing with grace is so important anyway so that I just leave it like muddy uh, and muddy up my colors a little. And if I want to get like very bright highlights somewhere, it's very easier now because everything is a little muddy. So I can get like very saturated areas that pop out very, very better. Um, I can show you how, how I hold it because these ones, and that's why I lo love this one so much, it has like a clip on the bottom where you can put your th thumb through, hold it open and then you have a box and you can hold it and, and in the same hand as you're holding your palette, you can also hold your sketchbook and it being this small, it's all I need really. I can now take my brush, get it wet, get it in the paint, get painting. There's one other thing that makes everything a little bit more convenient, I forgot about, it's one of those clamps. It doesn't have to be a fancy one like this, could be any kind of clamp. Because you can clamp down your sketchbooks and they stay open. So they are kind of like a big flat piece of paper. Now if I combine that with the ring on my box and hold it, 
everything I need is in one hand and I can just start painting, which is probably the easiest setup to go plein air painting without having to use a big pochard box or spend that much money. It's one of those clips. It's one of those containers. They can be a little on the pricey side, but they are not as pricey as a pochard box. Some random ass brush you can throw around and beat up very badly, or even like a small brush you can just saw the back off and throw in your, in your little palette. Um, some gouache paint, personally, one of the biggest recommendations I can make for you. Something to sketch, even though it's not really needed, some sketchbook, and you're probably set. Like, this is the setup you can hold, and it's not even like heavy or anything because it's all very small. Now, if I could like improve on this, uh, and probably the next purchase I'm gonna make for this setup, which I don't know when it's ever gonna be because I haven't purchased anything for my outside painting setup since the beginning of this year, when I was in Poland and purchased this pencil <laughs> and this sketchbook. Um, I'm probably thinking about getting one of those travel brushes. I can take the top off and plug it into itself because it's gonna, effectively be the same use of a brush I'm doing now, but on top of that, protecting the brush and giving me a better tip. So that's probably one investment I'm thinking about doing on top of this. Um, but honestly, for going out watercolor painting, I don't need anything more. I could think about a bit of bigger sketchbook or something in a different format, but I think this bigger sketchbook would mean I couldn't hold it as long and I wouldn't probably do it as often or regularly because it's going to get very heavy and I'm going to get rushed in the end of the painting process. Now I hope you could take something from this and I could make you feel like plein air painting is very accessible, you don't need anything really fancy for it. And if you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy me trying to study like the old masters in this video.